Hi guys, we got something really cool we're going to be doing today. We're cutting heat treated Inconel. This stuff is about 48 Rockwell and is extremely hard to machine. I'm going to show you three techniques we use using carbide, ceramic, and wire EDM machining. Please stick around for some really cool footage. So, to really get an appreciation of how hard this stuff is to machine, we're going to start off using carbide as our insert grade. This is widely used for all materials. Carbide is a very good candidate um, to select for your insert. In special cases like ours where we have this heat treated inconel, you're going to be able to tell that the carbide is just, just takes way too long. Um, here we're going 100 SFM, pretty beefy cut, 75 thousandths down, um, but that's really about top speed. If it was an annealed inconel, we could, we could about double the speed. Here I think we're going about six or seven inches a minute and you can see that already the, the tool has overheated. Now in all fairness, this wasn't the tool's first pass. Uh, it'll go like that for about six minutes, seven minutes. I think it could do like probably like three or four passes at that speed, which is a real pain because you have to keep indexing the insert and that takes a lot of time. So let's show you what the ceramic will do. So the crazy thing about using ceramic is while you're watching it and it looks like you should be running for your e-stop to stop the machine immediately. Um, this stuff is actually supposed to look like this. What's happening is your surface footage, if you remember when we were cutting the carbide, it was like 100. Uh, here, it's 2600, and at, towards the end of the video, we go up to 4000. And what that actually does is it's actually plasticizing the material. So the material um, will have like a stress strain relationship, and that heat is so high that the material, its yield strength actually goes down. So here we're taking quite a few interrupted cuts which isn't good because you want that constant engagement on the tool um, but we have two parts in there right now and probably the best way would have been to stay on one part and then move to the other but this is just simpler to program quickly but you could see that's really melting away and every depth of cut I would look at the, the inserts and you'll get about the same amount of time out of the tool that you would with the carbide. So like here, it's only gonna last about five minutes. But the great thing is you're going at 10 to 20 times the speed. So that is a huge saving right there. Um, here we're ramping it up a little. This is a little lighter of a cut, a uh, depth of cut, but a lot faster feed rate. Um, the next thing I wanna do is compare this to wire EDM. Wire EDM is really slow, but you cut at the finished size. So you'll notice here, we have to take a bunch of depth cuts, whereas the wire EDM, you're cutting right to the size that you're at. You don't have to shear away all the material. So a wire EDM machine is pretty cool. It has this wire that gets pulled through these spools and it's like an anode and a cathode. The wire is charged positively and then your workpiece is negative. So the wire will cut your part, but it actually will never even touch it. It'll also do it all completely submerged. The reason they use water in wire EDM has to do with flushing out the burnt material and making room for a clean new uh, discharge. So the really cool thing about wire EDM is the wire actually never comes into contact with the part. Right before it touches the part, uh, there's a spark that discharges from the wire to the workpiece and the wire will keep actually moving back and forth maintaining that specific spark gap and it's something really cool to see so it's just about to hit um, here we're going to be going very slow um, this is about 0.1 inches a minute
Lastly here, I'm going to show a little comparison quickly of machining with ceramic versus machining with carbide. And putting them side by side, you can really see the, the time difference. Um, it is really tricky though to use the ceramic. I really went through a lot of inserts trying to figure out the, the most efficient feeds and speeds. And it's very expensive. I mean, at $25 an insert and it only lasts in five minutes. Um, the carbide is a lot cheaper. The inserts have a lot more edges. So like an insert edge and carbide, um, those are these are copy inserts. So you have two edges per side. You can flip around, you have eight edges. Whereas the ceramic, you're lucky if you can get more than one edge. If you really push it to five minutes, the, you're gonna be missing so much insert, you can't even index it. So you're really only getting like one or two edges most and the, the carbide you're going to get eight but you're going to spend ten times the amount of time changing inserts um, and you can only go ten times as slow so you can really see for a lot of aerospace applications if you're doing a turbine fin or something and you have a process very well defined and you're on a very expensive five axis machine uh, most of the time you're going to want to go with ceramic and same thing for hardened steels and stuff as you lower your surface footage, your your process times gonna just go way up. So um, most of the time, in our case, if it's a low quantity, we can usually get away with carbide or EDM, and we just have a huge the machines tied up, you know, ten times longer than it should be. Um, but it's not just such a waste. The, the main problem with it is you just get catastrophic failure. So here. Um, you know, just in five minutes, I blew through a $175 cutter body because I didn't stop it fast enough. And I was trying to really push the limit of the tool, plus, you know, three inserts at $25 a piece. Um, you know, that adds up to $250 in just a few minutes. Either way, you will be forced to use carbide because this stuff, like I said, it plasticizes the material, so it actually changes some of the properties. So right at the surface we are cutting will actually be annealed. So you're gonna have to leave at least, they say like the, the ceramic manufacturers say to leave like 50,000, so you wanna leave at least like 75,000 so you can clean it up with carbide. Uh, or worst case, just heat treat it after you're done roughing everything out. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm having so much fun making these videos. Please remember to subscribe and check out some more videos. And if there's anything you want to see, just comment below and I'll, sure, I'll be sure to include it in the next video. Thank you so much.